The one problem with simple gamma correction is that it is meant for monitors which have a very narrow range of tones that they're able to reproduce. A good monitor or display device can, can give you about five to seven stops of range that it can display, whereas a camera can record, you know, a high-end camera can record nine to 13 stops of range, and the human eye can record even more than that. Uh, we, we, we say it's sensitive from about 10 to 20 stops. If, if you look at any one image or anything in real life just for a second, you're seeing roughly nine to 10 stops of range. But the thing is that, that the eye can very quickly move around and look at different parts of the scene and also open and close your iris quickly without you noting it, noticing it. So you may look at the shadows under your desk and see you know, the detail under there and then look right out the window at the sun and, and see stuff out there. And you've, you're, you know, even though your eye can only see about 10 stops worth of information at once, you couldn't really look under your desk and out the window simultaneously and see all that detail. Because your eye can quickly move back and forth and open and close the eyes, you can actually see about 20 stops just when you're, when you're, when you're looking around the room. But so we won't worry about uh, trying to capture everything the human can, eye, can see in that situation. We don't have a camera yet which can record 20 stops. But we do have these cameras that rec can record you know, 12, 13 stops, sometimes a little more depending on who you talk to. And we have to crunch it down into this display device that can only do 5 to 7 stops. And if we just supply a basic 2.4 gamma curve and, and just take a, you know, a 7 stop chunk out of it, we're not going to get a, a very pleasing image in, in many cases. So here's an image that is properly gamma corrected for video and you can see that on my chart here you know the whites are white and the blacks are black and I got tonality in between so for this part of the image where it's properly lit it you know it, it, it looks pretty good but if you look in the background here it's it, there's a lot more light back here and this is all getting blown out and of course if you look at the windows you know there's all sorts of detail here that if I were actually standing here looking at this scene I would see detail out those windows I also got you know, all these specular highlights of the glass that are, are really kind of blinding and all the practicals, all the details washed out of them. So just doing a simple, you know, take the take the, the seven stop range out of the camera that I want and, and chuck it onto a video monitor, gamma corrected, is not really going to give you a pleasing image. And in fact, this scene was recorded with a camera that shoots log. And here's the log image, and you can see all that detail is there. So the camera is able to see all the detail out the window and in the background here. It's just that we're not bringing it into the video monitor's range of what it can re reproduce in a good way. So this is where color correction comes in, because you can decide how much of that highlight detail you, you want to keep. It may be that you know, if you have a scene which doesn't you know, which didn't have these windows, if it was just a close-up on her, it may, it may not matter because you don't need all that extra range. You just need the, the five to seven stops to represent her face. But if you've got one that has a wide range of tones like this, then, yeah, you want to do some color correction to determine how to, bring, how to bring that information in. So here, again, is the image with just a straight five to seven stop chunk out of it. And here it is just doing a, a very simple highlight roll-off in the color corrector before I apply that 2.4 gamma curve. So again, that's without color correction, with all the blown out highlights, and you see you have the specular detail and, all, and the practicals here. And if I just do a simple highlight roll off, I get some detail back. My highlights aren't blowing out so as much, and it all, it all looks much more, more natural and nice. The problem, of course, with log recording is that, or raw recording, is that when you look at the flat image on set, or when you first bring it into editorial, if you haven't color corrected, or into the color correction bay, it looks pretty flat and ugly and desaturated. And that's because to, you know, if, if you take this wide range of color and this wide range of contrast that a camera can capture and just stuff it onto your screen, which can only represent, you know, a small amount of that range, it's going to look, it's going to look flat and desaturated. So that, that's when you would want to use a color transform like I did. In this case, that was just a simple 2.4 gamma curve with color correction in front of it to determine you know, how you want to feed into that gamma curve. So what I don't recommend is just taking this flat log image and starting to color correct it and you know, trying to make it look good because you're going to spend a lot of time just making the image look decent, which robs you from your time of being able to do the creative color correction that you want to do to really finesse the image or you know, draw the eye where it needs to be drawn or put the emotional power into it. So if, if you can have a color transform that already gets you, you know, 80 or 90 percent of the way to, to where you want to be, it makes a lot of sense to do that. You just want to make sure that you're using the transform after your color correction, not before, because if you do it before you color correct in, in, your, in your pipeline, then you're grading on top of the lot. You've kind of already 
given up a lot of decision making power as to how those colors and how that tonality is brought into the range. If you color grade before that LUT or before that transform, then you have a lot more flexibility to choose how you want to bring those colors into this limited range. You get a much, much better result much faster. So if you, if you have your one camera and you have your one display device and you have a transform, and a lot of the camera manufacturers, whether it's Sony or Aria or Red, pr provide these transforms for you, then, then you're pretty much set. But unfortunately, a lot of productions today have to deal with this situation, which is you have a project that's shot on a number of different cameras. You got that stuff shot on the GoPro, that stuff shot on the iPhone. You know, they shot a little bit on the F55 or some other small Sony camera and some on the Alexa, and they have to mix it all into this final piece. And oh, by the way, you're not just delivering to HD video, you're also delivering to digital cinema and to film, and there's a 3D version which has its own color requirements, and you just have all this stuff coming in and you need to give it out to all these places. And you could try to track color transforms and LUTs that deal with all the different combinations of these devices, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the better thing is to have a, a color system, a color management system, which can deal with that. 